Hello and welcome to this week's video. Yep, we returned to voiceover. Partly because my cameras were playing up in the shed and it's 4.30 on Saturday morning and I'm taking the easy way out. So this is a reincarnation of the Autumn Riot colours from last week. Um, similar colours to begin with. Um, dark brown, an ochre, a mid-brown and later some black and some white. And um, going for a more restrained look on this uh, particular colouring technique. As you can see, some nice paintwork going on. Um, it was hard getting even lines with the paint. Probably would have been better to have mixed it with a bit of flow medium and maybe used a better quality brush. But for the purposes of this colouring technique, I think it's worked fine. So I started off with the lighter brown then moved to the darker browns, experimented with turning it by hand or having it turned by power, and in the end, well, power was just much more exciting. Um, as I was putting the paint on, I was thinking, this isn't quite the look I want, a little scrappy. Um, out came the comb, and that, although you can't see it very clearly, must buy some good quality video equipment one day, um, put some nice texture in. Probably if I were to do this again, I wouldn't put quite so much paint on, but as you know, I just like to experiment and play around, and it would have probably been better to have got the paint on and then got the texture going. Um, but I like to play around and fiddle and put more paint on and do a bit more fiddling, just to sort of see the effect. So hence the need to put a bit more paint over the previous combing efforts. Um, partly because I didn't start combing until it was dry in some places and that just put some streaks in. Uh, to the edge of the rim, uh, that was looking a little too austere, a word which will no longer feature in our political vocabulary. Um, I wanted to put a bit more contrast in, so out came the white. Um, a bit too garish for my subtle eye for colour <laughs> so toned down with a little bit of black as well and then I had to make a decision about finishing off um, the texture I didn't want just paint I didn't want flat paint there was some texture from the combing but because I'd done it at different times when some of the paint was dry and some wasn't um, I needed something that would sort of unify all that texture so out came my sorby texturing tool. Now it's just a case of uh, trying it in the middle to begin with because if it didn't work I could turn that out when I finished the bowl in the middle. I was happy with how it looked. So then the whole rim got that treatment. Then uh, it was a little rough in the hand. I didn't want to remove paint but I did want to remove the high point. So this is 1200 grit paper being used. Um, and I'm doing it very, very lightly. Uh, it might look like it's being rubbed quite hard, but there you go, you can see how lightly I was holding the paper. So that just took all the high spots off. Now normally, acrylic sanding sealer, but here's a can of chestnuts cellulose sanding sealer that was used on this, um, on this piece, and I was very happy with it. And uh, a few coats, well, not really a few coats, a few sprays. And then while that coat was drying, it was time to put my feet up. Got a new haircut. Ready for the start of term. And while the cellulose lacquer is drying, no biscuits, not this week, no apples. Chuck ice on a stick. Yummy. And while I've been enjoying my ice cream, I've been thinking about what finish to put over the cellulose sealing, sealer. And actually, I don't think I want a thick, glossy thing 
finish with this. I want to shine. I'm going to do a little bit of burnishing cream and then microcrystalline wax. See how that stands up. Okay, a bit of wax. Now I know I could have used other things. I could have done a bit of gilt cream, got that into the texture, but I think I'm just gonna stick with paint on this one. Give that wax 20 minutes before I can buff it. And then I'll do that with a little mop in a power drill. Right, I'm off for a cup of tea. Right, let's get on and see how that improves or finishes off. A sort of tall leather look. Hmm. Tall leather, yeah, that could be the name. All finished off. My tooled leather effect, shallow bowl. Um, I think this was more successful than the last one. Um, I was toying with the idea of putting some transparent red over the top, but I bottled out. It's not like me, is it, to err on the side of caution? Must be nerved about going back to school tomorrow. Although by the time this video is posted, I'll be well back in the saddle. Right, still's coming up. A very effective, easy technique, I think. Uh, the reason for using the texturing tool was, um, although I put some texture in by dragging the comb across it, that didn't occur to me until after I'd um, allowed some of the paint to dry. And just using the that texturing wheel on it um, and then sanding back with 1200 grit I think uh, took it a bit beyond where it was with the comb um, and you'll see that in the in the stills you should be able to see the faint darker lines of the comb and then the lighter uh, lines of the texture where you know when it's been sanded and uh, the white was one of the wetter paints when that was being done where it's picked that picked up that white Perhaps the white's a little bright in that texture. Might have preferred beige. Until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>